All right, I wanted to hop on and show you guys what I saw today. Um, I did end up green on the day, even though I fumbled my trade at the bottom here that I took long. I'll go over that in a little bit, but did end up about 1,200 up for the day. Probably should have been a lot bigger day, uh, but my execution was garbage. But I was seeing the market, I think, pretty well and being patient for my edge to show. So I'll kind of show you guys what I saw and go over everything. So this is ES. Um, we did form two-hour demand overnight at this key level, which is 37.44. Uh, this is a level that, that I've had marked out for a while. It's just a place we've bounced a lot and shown support and resistance on the higher time frames. So we did have that overnight, and then we did have supply above. So the open was extremely choppy. Uh, j Powell was testifying in front of Congress. Usually that either leads to big moves, kind of like we saw yesterday at the open, or just straight chop. So this is what we saw at the open on the 15 minute. Uh, we had a doji, like a hammer here on high volumes. So that kind of was bullish, but you know we were just up and down all day. We were at this 3780 level. This was a key support and resistance I had. So wasn't looking to take anything long or short at this level. I wanted to see us break out from it and come back and retest or test these zones above or below. Um, something to note also, I did have uh, this downtrend. We kind of had this uh, triangle here on the day. So did have that. We had this channel up and then this trend line at the bottom here. So this was actually right here showing on the day, prior to the day. So this is kind of what we had going on. Um, everything was kind of rising in a wedge or a channel. And we were approaching supply above. So on the 15 minute here, like I said, we opened, chop, 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 chop. Volume was pretty dead. Uh, we did have this breakout here, um, kind of from this triangle we were forming in the middle of the day. But we didn't really break out strongly from it, uh, so I kind of stayed away. I didn't take any trades here. Uh, you did, you could have shorted this um, hanging man at the top here uh, with like tight risk right above the high if you wanted to, but the volume was really low, so it didn't really show me a lot. Eventually, uh, price did come down, and we did break this trend line here on the 15 minute and closed under this. 3780 level. So that was a key level that we closed under on strong volume here. So it showed that the sellers were there. So if you went short at the close of this candle with a stop maybe above the 3780 or even 3785, uh, this was the high of yesterday, I believe, or two, two days ago. That's the high of two days ago. Um, that probably would have been your best bet if you took this trade. I did not take it because we were just right around this 3780 level and basically right back at open. So I didn't know if this was going to bounce or what, what was going to happen. So I did not take this short. Um, there's a few members in my group that did, and that paid really well. But this would have been a good entry to go short. And this is the only thing that I personally see on the 15 minute using volume. I think maybe you could have played this long, but the reason I wouldn't have played this breakout long is due to the supply above that we've rejected off of a couple times. So I was looking more so for like a fake out where we break out and then get stuffed by this zone and then fall, which is what, what, what happened. But the volume at the zone was extremely weak, so I did not play it. So we did break this trend line, came down, uh, sold off. We did see buyers start to step in here on the hammer on the 15 minute. Um, this was also the close of the day prior, I believe. Yes, the blue dots here, the close of the day prior. So that's usually um, a strong support or re resistance level that, that I look for to bounce off of. Um, we were in this zone here. Uh, we did hit this two hour demand on this candle. I think NQ also, they did not actually. So on this candle, NQ was not down here in the demand that formed overnight. So that was the reason that I did stay out. Um, I was looking for buyers to step in here, but I didn't want to be a first buyer. So this sp volume spike here did show me that buyers were active, um, but I was waiting for a little more confirmation on this trade. Um, the next candle was a low volume flag where we just kind of pulled back on low volume. So that shows me that there's probably going to be more downside to this move. 
which the next candle did. Um, volume was pretty flat all in this range. So it was kind of hard to get long here. This candle was pretty good for going long. Um, reason being, we tested this trend line. Usually the trend lines will break and wick at it, but it will still hold. So this was still a valid long to me. Also with this 37.44 level, uh, that's another key level that I've been looking at and playing. Um, that wicked at that, so that was a great, great long. It was hard to get long on ES here due to not having the volume come in. NQ, though, did have a much better volume spike showing the long here. And NQ is also bouncing off a trend line from the past two days, the same trend that, that ES was. So that was another confirmation to go long. And it finally hit this zone as well. Whereas up here, ES was in its zone, but NQ wasn't. So I was waiting for NQ to sell off a little bit more. And then we did hit also hit this 11,580 key, key level that I've been watching and playing. Um, we bounced, you know, once, twice, three times, four times. Like, it's just been bouncing left and right since FOMC. So this was a big level I was watching. Uh, this was the candle to go long on, on NQ or ES. NQ did show the volume come in much better. So this was a better long signal right here. Um, if you wanted to, you could have waited. I actually did wait. Uh, I didn't think that, or I didn't know if this was going to bounce or not. So I waited. Um, we didn't get a push up here on the trade, and then this was a low volume test of the lows. So once that didn't break and we started to get bought up, I scaled in at 11,594. So I scaled in like right about here. So after we wicked, we wicked all these highs, and then the volume was really low on this drop, and we started to come back up. That's when I thought that the buyers were going to hold. Another thing that helped me confirm this trade was the VIX. So the VIX had a trend line here from the lows that we have been holding, and I was looking for it to hold or possibly break down. But this was, I was looking for this, so we draw a trend line from the bottom of VIX, and also this trend line as well from the VIX. So what happened was we broke this trend line down here and we failed. So since this was going to pump up, this is where the market started to drop. And then we hit 90 minute supply right here. And when we were hitting sub supply on the VIX, that's when ES and NQ were hitting their demand zones as well as their trend lines. So this was a high quality trade of showing all three hitting the zones that they should be hitting at the same time. And then I was expecting this to fail. And for me, this is a failed failure um, in terms of like Al Brooks, if you know what like he trades or kind of his like jargon, I guess. But usually when there's like a pattern forming and you have a trend line here or say you have like a triangle and one side tries to break out and doesn't and then the other side tries to break out and doesn't and comes back, that's when you know to fade this second breakout because usually if this fails, it gets people trapped. And then if this fails, it also traps people. So you're basically double trapping people and then you wanna take this move short. And the extra confirmation that was, that was there was the 90 minute supply zone above. So with VIX hitting supply, ES and NQ hitting trend lines and demand zones, this was a great long. Um, so I went long about here looking for us to, you know, at least get up to this zone. So I, I did, so actually, I will tell you what I did. I broke my rules a little bit, and I ended up going long early. I was watching the five minute, even though I shouldn't have. I went long on this five minute candle volume spike on ES with a stop under the low. Obviously, that didn't work out. So I don't know. I shouldn't look at the five. I should just stick to my rules and look at the 15, but I was trying to get an early entry, which doesn't always work out. It's better to wait for the confirmation to come in before taking a trade so i got stopped on that so that sucked and then after i saw us start to push up again here i ended up going long um, i think right here problem was i went to click long and i clicked sell so price started to go up and i was thinking oh this is great this is perfect gonna be in profit and my profits were just gone just gone like my losses were stacking up at this point and I was like what the fuck is going on 
Of course I was short, so ended up closing that. So I took two losses back to back, was a little bit flustered on my execution. And that's when I finally took NQ long here because my thesis was still valid. It still looked good. I just fumbled the entries on my last two trades. So I was looking to make that back. Um, I got in here. The volume didn't come in on this candle, which kind of scared me a little bit. And then we just kind of held at VWAP here. So that's where I scaled out half the trade. Um, I got some of my losses back, but I wasn't green on the day. But I wasn't going to hold until you know price came all the way back 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 down to my entry and you know I was going to be even more red so and then we got this candle finally on the 15 on NQ and that's where uh, you know I was like okay so this might actually run a little bit so I was holding my last runner on the trade um, we got this volume spike again I ended up holding all the way till uh, the 15 minute prior close I probably should have scaled out after the break of high a day um, but after I got into this area, I was in profit on the day, and I really didn't see any reason to sell. So we did have this volume spike here. Uh, we tested the high from two days ago, uh, but we didn't really fall back under this candle. So as you can see, once we once this move started happening, almost every candle made higher highs and higher lows. So there really wasn't a reason to sell or, or get out. I did get out here because this was a zone uh, that could have possibly rejected. So scaled out there but on the runner there really wasn't a reason to get out um, the VIX was dropping ES was coming back to its 3780 level which was a key le level here but it was holding it 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 rejected a little bit here but it held V V WAP the whole time so there really wasn't a reason to sell so I ended up holding NQ up to here um, and end of the day profitable up about twelve hundred dollars or so should have been a lot bigger day, but this was a trade that was probably one of the best ones I've taken or the most confirmations I've seen in terms of ES and NQ lining up as well as the VIX lining up. So again, those are the best types of trades to take. I did think about swinging this because I do think we are going to break out of these highs here, uh, but I ended up selling. I'm not really a swing trader much. Um, usually if I get like a runner in profit, then I will. But since I was down on the day and I had to lock in these gains to be green, I just wanted to get out and take my really good trade that I had, even though I fumbled the entry, and then I can start again fresh in the next day. So that's kind of what I saw on the day. Um, I hope that helps. Um, I think the main thing I want to point out is playing like the bigger trend lines for the momentum moves. Yes, this was a great scalp, I think, to the downside on ES more so but really you know you're only catching you're you're really not in the zone you're catching just a little breakout of a one day or like an intraday pattern whereas i think this trade from the lows of the trend line to the highs was a lot better trade because you're getting the confirmations of the higher time frames and so when you're trading those bigger trend lines those are going to usually have the bigger moves on the day you know like this trend line break was great but this one was twice as big, so or trend bounce, I should say. So I think that's just something to take in, into con consideration when you're playing momentum trades is, you know, I didn't take a trade until 11 a.m. My, my time, so I was sitting here for four hours just watching this play out. I did get a little bit of f FOMO when I saw this break, and I, and I didn't take it, and it just kept dropping. But I just want to stick to my rules, play my zones, just wait for price to enter them. So looking back, what I probably would have done differently is waited for the 15 minute to show the buyers come in. So if I would have truly waited and didn't even look at the five, this would have been my long with a stop under the low. And I could have rode that out all day and had a really big day. But hindsight's always 20-20. But that does show that even if you wait for the 15 minute candles to close you're not going to miss out on a trade even if you got in here with a stop you know under this you have this whole way to make gains and profits on you know so i know waiting for the 15 minute is a long time but i think the confirmations on the 15 minute are a lot stronger and i think 
the signals are as well. Because if you look at the five here, the five wasn't bad actually on NQ. This was a pretty decent long. This was lower volume, so this didn't really show it, but the 15 minutes is just a lot more clear. And then even the 30 as well. Uh, this didn't have a lot of volume to it. I don't think ES did either. But usually when there's volume on the 30 minute and you get those spikes at the highs or lows, those are the best types of trades too. So yesterday when we broke the high a day on ES and rejected on a shooting star here at the top of this channel on high volume, even you you can see here like the volume is massive. Then we just dropped afterwards. So those are the type of plays that I'm looking for more so is I'm looking for the volume to come in on like the half hour or the 15 minute at these trend lines and then or even supply and demand zones and then take them you know in into the next zone so i hope that helps um if there's any questions definitely post them under the video and i can definitely answer them you know um if there's any other types of videos you guys want to see i'd love to do that too but this was kind of how i saw price action today and the trades i took so Hope you guys enjoyed. Have a good one.